The biggest issue, however, is the relationships. Oh, goodness, the relationships. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, let's start from the beginning. First, we have uh, Sidetwy and... Uh, I don't even like calling her that. <laughs> First, we have the uh, Twilight and Flash. You know, the human Twilight and Flash. Um, obviously, they're not going to get together because they had the Flash with the pony twilight so that just makes sense so i was i was glad they addressed that pretty quickly um so after that it moves on to timber and twilight oh my God. okay let's stick let's stick with flash for a bit let's stick with flash okay so flash uh realizes that he doesn't have a chance with twilight okay that makes sense it's not his twilight like he said and then sunset comes over and says yeah well twilight's gonna be in equestria so you should just get over her I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a really big leap there. She's going to be an Equestria, so you can just get over her. One, long-distance relationships are a thing. Like, pe people do do long-distance relationships. Two, it's not even a long-distance relationship. Like I said, Flash can go to the school. The portal is always open. And Twilight keeps the portal in her house. Like, he can visit her. He can visit her anytime he wants. She can visit him anytime she wants. That's that's not a long distance relationship. Twilight is an important princess, yes, but that made no sense to me. Like they, it seemed to me like they just wanted to get rid of Flash. And remember, in my um, "Why Starlight Glimmer Sucks" video, I said, "Well, Starlight Glimmer sucks, but the only way I see of making this better is just to get rid of her." But even then, that would be bad from a storytelling point of view. A storytelling point of view that's what this is doing it seems like they're just trying to get rid of flash from the relationship and it's really it's really bad from a storytelling point of view you put all this time and dedication into making him a relationship character with the pony twilight and now you're just dumping him for this reason that does, it, the reason doesn't even make sense that's that's my problem if the reason made sense I sound so whiny right now. If the reason made sense, we were going to get some power converters. <laughs> uh, but if the reason made sense, like, I would not be making such a big deal. But they, it's like they didn't even try. And then moments later, after telling him to break up, to just forget about Twilight, Sunset comes in. And tries to get with Flash. Or, she doesn't try to get with Flash, but they, they try to make Flash in the sunset a thing. And I thought, I, I'm just like, is that all this guy is to you guys? Someone to potentially be a boyfriend. Make him a character. I know you guys aren't used to writing guy characters, and when you do, you kind of mess up like you do with Spike, but come on. <laughs> you can make this guy an actual character. Flash was in a short with some other guys, and he had more character in that one, I think it was like a five minute short, than all four of the Equestria Girls movie combined. And when I was watching Bronies react, uh, Black Griffin was saying how he had a bit more sympathy for Flash, um, because, like, he, he felt he had more character in him, because he was, uh, he was a nice guy being dumped, and I'm like, well, that doesn't really give him more personality, because he's a nice guy being dumped. I mean, you could react anyway, when <laughs> being dumped, that doesn't that wouldn't necessarily give you more personality. And he wasn't even dumped. That's that's just the thing. He just couldn't be with Twilight. Like I don't see his personality growing. And I'm so mad because it's the fourth movie. It's the fourth movie, and they still just see Flash as arm candy. Like that's that's not good. You have this character, use him. And <laughs> it really. Uh, Okay, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. Now, Timber. Let's get to Timber. Like I said, the relationships are the things I hate the most about this movie. Freaking Timber is the thing I hate the most about the relationships. Like, Flash, I don't hate Flash. I hate the writing surrounding Flash. I hate what they're doing to him. I feel like he has potential. Timber, to me, does not have potential at all. I hate timber with a burning passion and here's why okay i've seen some people who say oh they make a cute couple or something i am not against i'm not against shipping i am not 
if you do it right, I will be right there with you. I'm perfectly fine with shipping. I was there when Sora and Ty did not wind up together in Season 2 of Digimon, okay? And I was upset. I was really upset. And ever since that moment, I have shipped. I have shipped hard sometimes, too. Um, I was there when uh, Zutara didn't work out. I was angry at that, too. I wanted Zutara to work out. I will ship if need be. But the characters need to work. And that's the thing about Timber. His Timber's problem... And I posted this somewhere on the internet. Timber's biggest problem is that his personality is fake. That's his biggest problem. Whereas Flash didn't really have a personality. Like, he was whatever the plot was making him at that moment where he would be a nice guy or he would be a bad boy. Not even really a bad boy. He just had accessories that a bad boy would have. Flash has always been a nice guy, um, a really bad really boring nice guy timber's personality is just basically play off of everything twilight says and to me that doesn't work um they they try to pass him off as this really cool geek or no not yeah this really cool geek this really cool nerd but listen to the conversations that he has with twilight she says something and then he just plays off of it He's not a geek or a nerd or anything like that. He just has good conversation skills. That's all that is. And that, that makes sense. You know, he's a camp counselor. But the, he doesn't have anything in common with Twilight. At least, they haven't shown us that he has something in common with Twilight. All they've shown is that he can respond to a conversation. And it angers me so much because the show is basically saying, hey, we did something awesome right here. Look at it. Accept it. It's awesome. It's amazing. And it annoys me so much because, one, why would, why would Twilight even care about a relationship? Why? This does not make any sense for either Twilight. Neither have ever showed interest in any kind of relationship. And when they finally tried to give him some personality, like just a little bit, they revealed that secret when he was little. It's like, that's not a secret. That is not a secret. You had an opinion. <laughs> oh, M. Goodness. I hate Timber. I hate Timber so much. I hope I got everything out. Like, I literally, I legitimately started forgetting what I was saying. Because I have such hatred for this character. He's so forced. That's something I wanted to say. The, the, the relationships add nothing to the plot. They add nothing to the plot and they add nothing to character. That's, that's their biggest problem. If you can't add to the plot, at least add something to character. Like how Applejack was saying she wanted to forge her own stuff and she made her own hair, hammer. That didn't really add to the plot, although it should have. That would have been a neat little comeback. That didn't really add to the plot, but it added to her character. You know, it showed what AJ was. She was a girl who liked working hard and working off the environment. She enjoyed doing that. Like, Sunset and Twilight... Falling in love adds nothing to their personalities because you're not giving them legitimate people to fall in love with. And when you think about Timber, what was the first thing he did? He looked at Twilight and instantly liked her. It was, it was a love at first sight kind of thing. And she looked back and instantly liked him. That's not a compatible relationship. That's, hey, you're sexy. Hey, you're sexy too. Like, and I understand that happens, you know, people look at each other and they, they like the way each other looks, but that's not shipping material. You can't, you can't play off that and say, oh, these two must belong together, based off that. Especially in a world where everybody is different colors, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Okay, I spent so much time on this relationship thing. But know that the relationships are the things I hate most about this movie, and Timber is the thing I hate most about the relationships. Alright, moving on. Uh, the rest of the songs, I said I like the first song. The rest of the songs are just generic. Like, they're not bad. They're just generic. They're unmemorable and not as good. I, I had this complaint about um, Skyward Sword music as well. Um, the, the, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, The Legend of Zelda. Uh, Legend of Zelda has some of the most iconic music in gaming. 
and it's it's always been very memorable in capturing both the environment and the atmosphere and in skyward sword i felt it only captured the environment so it wasn't memorable and that's kind of how i feel about this in the legend of everfree as well um most of the music it's it feels to me like it's capturing the lyrics but not i want to say not in a way uh, i can't really word it well but it's just not memorable that's the best way i can word it um not in a way that's going to make me remember it or stand out or anything you could replace a lot of these things with other generic songs and they would work and that's really a downside to me because my favorite part of Equestrian Girls is the songs. Um, the first one didn't have that many good ones. It only had two, but the two that were good really stood out. Like, the Cafeteria song made me sit up and start paying attention. Now, another point is, things in this movie are so unbelievably obvious that it hurts. Now, some of the things that the Bronies React said were, um, some of them appreciated how there were red herrings and how there was things trying to fool the o uh, audience. <laughs> And I can appreciate a red herring if it's done well. Like, the first three movies, no, they didn't have red herrings. But the climaxes were still well well done. We didn't need a, uh, oh, what the twist moment for their climaxes to work. Like, Rainbow Rocks, we still enjoy. I said the first three movies. The first movie did not work well. Rainbow Rocks and Friendship Games. Uh, Rainbow Rocks, we still love that whole Scott Pilgrim vs. the World climax that happened. We love that. Friendship Games, we love uh, Twilight vs. Sunset. That was great. That was fantastic. We didn't need a red herring for that. This gives us red herring, but it's one you obviously see coming. That's when uh, when they're like, oh, the brother is clearly trying to get rid of the the people here at camp. It's like, no, that's not what's happening, because you've obviously pointed it out. Can we make a good one? And I was just so disappointed when Gloriosa turned out to be the bad guy, because I called it the instant I saw her. Uh, granted, I when I saw Legend of Everfree, you know, I kind of knew. Uh, it, to me, Everfree seemed like a female name, even though that's the name of an actual place. But I was right though, you know, Guy Everfree, but you know, Guy is supposed to be something else. Anyway, um, that's why when I was like, oh, hey, it's a new female. She's obviously going to be the villain because that's happened in every Equestria Girls movie. The new female is the villain. And that just, we didn't need that. Um, next point, Filthy Rich being the bad guy. Can someone please explain that to me? Because this doesn't make any sense. Everything I've seen with Filthy Rich shows that he's just he's just a nice rich guy. Yeah, he's rich, but he's not a bad guy. And some of the bronies in Bronies Rap were pointing out, um, even in this even in this movie, he's not being a bad guy, but the movie's portraying him as one. He's actually being really reasonable. He's like, fine, I'll give you to the end of the month. That's reasonable. <laughs> he was reasonable about the whole thing, but the movie's like, oh, Filthy Rich, you're so rich. Look at you being rich over there. By rich, I clearly mean evil, but I'm saying rich. You rich person, you. Ugh, it's, ugh. That made no sense. That made no sense, and it was forced for the plot. And like I said, they could have used the Flim Flam Brothers. They would have got the same message across. And then finally, we have the big complaint I had, that this is not its own movie. And I, I think I made this point pretty clear in the review. Um, because it was during the wrap-up, but this whole movie was constructed around, hey, I bet you can't wait for the fifth movie. And even though The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is like, I really love that movie. I know a lot of people hate that movie specifically for that reason, and I can see why now. You know, I was expecting a good, solid adventure here. I was not expecting you to set up a good, solid adventure for next time. And that's why I think this movie has so many flaws because of that. Like, a lot of things don't work because of that. And I was so, I was so disappointed when they put on those awesome-looking costumes and did nothing with them. They did nothing with them. Like, they, they said, oh, we just saved the day. Here's some costumes. Over. That's such a tease. That is such a tease. And it, it it annoys me. It annoys me greatly. 
Um, it also annoyed me that the movie kept going after the plot was over. That annoyed me. That ending was so just not wanted. No, I don't like that ending. So basically, I think that this will pretty much cover up, uh, cover my overall thoughts, you know. I know that I'm very negative with this series. Um... But that's not something I apologize for, but I do want to show people that I did. I didn't go in this movie thinking I'm going to hate this movie. I'm going to criticize the mess out of it. No, I love Equestria Girls. Um, I love it less now because of this movie, but I love Equestria Girls, and I wanted to like this movie. And there are things I do like about this movie, but because like my expectation was already at an all time high, it could only go lower, and this movie made it go so low with some of the things did and quite frankly i really want to go back to talking about timber because it it makes me so infuriating just thinking what they did with him but overall yeah i'd say objectively speaking this is the second worst of the series and for me personally i just i think this is my least favorite of the four movies so i hope i've made that clear um i know this is a different type of video than what i normally do i hope you guys enjoyed it the Justice League reviews will be starting up soon, so I hope you guys can catch those. And I will see you later, I guess. I don't know. This has been Shady Durags. So long, farewell, I'd be to say goodbye.